What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Screen Fiends. I want to talk a little bit today about James Cameron and his recent comments on Marvel Studios. You guys might remember several years ago, Martin Scorsese, of course, the iconic director of Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, etc., made some pretty harsh comments about Marvel movies, kind of came out against them and said that they weren't real cinema, uh, equated them more to amusement park rides. And ever since then, it seems like every big iconic director is always asked when making the rounds promoting one of their new films what they think about Marvel movies. And the latest director to be asked this question is James Cameron, who of course is out here promoting his new sequel to Avatar, The Way of the Water, which comes out in December. So let's take a look at this article here from IndieWire. James Cameron says Marvel DC characters lack depth. They all act like they're in college. James Cameron is calling on movie superheroes to grow up. The Avatar Way of Water director dissed Marvel and DC superheroes for being two-dimensional characters that lack any real-world motivations or deeper emotions. Aside from seemingly eternal young in Spider-Man, minus the Sam Raimi trilogy, the Marvel heroes act like they're in college, Cameron said. When I look at these big, spectacular films, I'm looking at you, Marvel and DC, it doesn't matter how old the characters are. They all act like they're in college. They have relationships, but they really don't, Cameron told the New York Times. They never hang up their spurs because of their kids. The things that really ground us and give us power, love, and a purpose, those characters don't experience it. And I think that's not the way to make movies. Avatar The Way of Water will be released 13 years after the original record-breaking blockbuster Avatar that followed Jake exploring the Navi culture and falling in love with local Natiri. The sequel picks up with Jake and Atiri being parents to three children, as well as a fourth adoptive teen daughter, played by Sigourney Weaver. The newfound responsibilities for both parent characters play into their decision-making, process, and stunts, according to the Oscar-winning Cameron. Zoe and Sam now play parents 15 years later, Cameron said. In the first movie, Sam's character leaps off his flying creature and essentially changes the course of history as a result of this crazy, almost suicidal leap of faith. And Zoe's character leaps off a limb and assumes there's going to be some big leaves down there that can cushion her fall. But when you're a parent, you don't think that way. So for me, as a parent of five kids, I'm saying, what happens when those characters mature and realize that they have a responsibility outside their own survival? As actor Worthington noted, Jim wrote this family in a great way, where not only are there stakes of life and death, but the conflicts are quite domestic. You're still having these arguments with kids that you would every day, like pick up your clothes, eat your food, even though the world is at war. So yeah, I definitely have some thoughts on this story. I think that for the most part, James Cameron is pretty on point. I share a lot of his criticisms about Marvel movies and DC movies, at least for the most part. You know, there are exceptions. For example, DC's The Batman starring Robert Pattinson, I think is a damn near masterpiece. I think it's one of the best comic book movies ever made, at least out of the last 10 years or so. And I don't think that the criticisms he's making of DC and Marvel characters here really apply to a film like that at all. I would say the same thing about about, for example, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie, another DC property. But as far as the kind of bigger, larger cinematic universe properties go, and the way that these studios handle their characters and kind of just treat them as these commodities to continue expanding the ever growing cinematic universe of characters. I do agree that sometimes they don't get the treatment they deserve. They don't have the depth they deserve. So while I definitely agree with James Cameron on a lot of his characterization of the way Marvel movies and DC movies treat characters and kind of have a lack of depth to them overall, I wouldn't say that's anything specifically new or unique. I mean, this is kind of a trend that you could apply to any major blockbuster film, or at least the most mainstream popcorn entertainment fair from the last 10, 20 years. I mean, you could say this about the Transformers movies or about the Godzilla movies, a franchise that I happen to like for my own guilty pleasure, nostalgic reasons, right? So, I mean, this is kind of just a broad critique that applies to much of mainstream blockbuster cinema these days. So I don't know if this complaint is, like I said, specifically unique to Marvel movies and comic book movies in general. He's kind of painting with a broad brush here. Again, given the fact that there are comic book movies with really good, interesting characters that I think are given depth and do act in more adult ways. Like I said earlier, The Batman from earlier this year, directed by Matt Reeves, I think is one of the best comic book movies ever made and a real example of how to foreground the characters, their development, their depth, and the nuance 
nuance of the human experience within a comic book story. I think Joker from 2019, maybe to a slightly lesser extent, did a similar thing. And obviously, there's a lot of good comic book movies out there as well from even Marvel, including Logan with Hugh Jackman. I thought that was an excellent comic book film that really did take its characters seriously. So I don't think this criticism applies generally to all superhero movies or comic book movies, not even all Marvel or DC movies. I think he's really referring to this big blockbuster trend of just continually cranking out more and more and more characters just for the sake of growing a cinematic universe, just for the sake of leading in to the next film. And again, I share that complaint. I'm no fan of Marvel, to be completely honest. I don't love the way they go about storytelling. Um, I have no problem with people that do enjoy Marvel movies. It's just not really specifically for me. But again, I think this criticism that he's making could really be applied to a lot of mainstream Hollywood fare. It's not really unique to Marvel or DC or anything like that. And also the other ironic thing about this, to be honest, is that I would say the characters in James Cameron's movies are specifically one of the weaker elements of his work as well. So again, a little bit ironic that he's going after the characters in specific when I think that even in some of James Cameron's best movies, the characters are often one of the weaker elements. And that's not to say that there haven't been great characters in James Cameron movies. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, there have been. Um, but if you look at Avatar, for example, I think one of the bigger criticisms and more valid criticisms of James Cameron's own work, including Avatar, is the characters and their lack of depth. I think the same thing could even be said of Titanic. And of course, Titanic is a classic for a reason. It's a great spectacle movie, just like a lot of the Marvel films that he's referencing. Um, but let's not act like the characters in that film have a ton of depth to them either. I would say that, in fact, the characters in Titanic, the characters in Avatar, the characters in a lot of James Cameron movies are pretty basic, and his films really rely more on the giant spectacle, the innovative special effects, and just the grand vision of it all. Um, the characters, as I said, are one of the weaker elements, in my opinion, in James Cameron movies as well. So I do find that a little bit ironic. But that being said, for the most part, I do agree with what James Cameron is saying here about Marvel movies. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of Marvel myself. I'm not a huge fan of the DCEU either, especially what Zack Snyder did with it. Um, but I have been a fan of some of their other outputs, such as Matt Reeves' Batman movies. I'm looking forward to seeing that universe continually built up. And of course, like I said, there have been some good Marvel movies as well, like Logan. So to be honest, I do have a little bit of mixed feelings about James Cameron's recent comments on the superhero genre, although largely I do agree with what he said. Either way, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of James Cameron's comments. Again, he's the latest big director to come out here and kind of take a fat crap on Marvel movies, DC movies, superhero films in general, and the way they've kind of homogenized the Hollywood blockbuster landscape, again, which is a criticism that I share. Either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that like button as well and subscribe to this channel if you're new. Thanks so much for tuning in, Screen Fiends. Catch you next time.